What's up, beautiful people? It is Deanna, your fave stylist. Sitting outside of my daycare center for my son and giving um, him some time to finish his little late snack with them. I figured I'd do my little video for the day. And um, this video might hit a little bit heavy for some people. And some people might be like, yeah, power to the people. And some people might be like, ooh, she's doing too much. Wherever you stand, you might need to hear it. So I'm going to say it. I'm going to just put it out there. And I'm going to put my experiences out there. So, And it just made me think of all my experiences, right? So today, I'm a hairstylist here in Tucson. I go to um, Cosmo Prof on Broadway. I walk in. And she's looking at me. The clerk is just looking at me. And my stylist that I brought in with me, she's just looking at me. No, hello, how are you? Welcome to Cosmo Prof. What can I do for you? Da 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 da. None of that. Just looking straight at me. With a little, like, confused smirk, like, you know, one of those. So when I get that, I'm oftentimes like, hello how are you you know like the roles reverse and now i gotta remind you that you're at work so you can do your job right i am coming to spend money your commercials have advertised for me to come and spend my green money so that's what i'm coming to do how dare when i come to the front door you don't make me feel welcome but that's neither here nor there right because i let it go and i said you know what Maybe she just has poor customer service because, you know, people usually do nowadays. Most people don't like their jobs and they don't get paid enough. And many people are just mean for absolutely no reason. Or maybe there is a reason. I don't know. Anyway, me and my stylist, we, you know, hey, you know, I'm like, hi, how you doing? She's like, oh, hi. And it's always, oh, hi. Oh, what am I invisible? Did I just appear when I said hello to you? Anyway, she does the oh hi thing and we play stupid right along with her so I can just get what I need and get up out of the store. Her next question is, oh hi, what, do you, what are you guys coming in for? What do you need? What are you looking for? We're looking for curly hair products. Oh, okay. She proceeds to go on about whatever it is she is doing, stocking, restocking, or whatever. So I'm like, all right, cool. You know, why did you ask me if you really wasn't about to help us get what we needed? So we're looking around. You know, I brush it off. I tell her, okay, well, you know, we're just looking around and... um. We're just looking around and kind of seeing what we are going to get, you know, getting some new toys for the salon, stuff like that. Just kind of brushing it off like, you know what, whatever. I'm tired of going through this unspoken racism everywhere I go as a business owner in Tucson, Arizona. So I'm like brushing it off, right? But then it starts to irk my nerves because... As I'm in there and I'm shopping for waxing supplies and I'm shopping for hair color and developer and all of this other stuff, I hear this same clerk repeatedly five times. Some wonderful people came in to the front door. Me being a beautiful person like I am, I'm paying attention to see if maybe that was just poor customer service before or maybe it's just you treating me different because I'm a beautiful woman right so I'm in there and I'm listening and the next five customers come in if you could see the pep in the clerk's step hi all the way from the back of the store hi welcome to Cosmo Prof come on in what can I help you with as soon as they need help with something, we hop into it to see what they need, showing them where it's at. And I'm irked and I'm aggravated, not because I'm not used to this, but because why do I have to be used to it? My money is green just like anybody else's, and I break bread just like any other hairstylist, if not more, because I'm a salon owner, so I'm coming in there buying from multiple stylists, so why wouldn't you respect me? You know what I mean? And it's not even about the money being respect, but that's what made you respect me. Once you relearned, because I guess you forgot I'm a salon, a, style, a salon owner because 
I've been in there at least, uh, you know, 10, 20 times since y'all moved to this new location, you know? And so it just really is disappointing to see a company actively promoting kinky, coily, uh, curly hair products. And because I just feel like since the George Floyd thing happened, companies have been um, reaching out intentionally to black business owners, Cosmoprof being one of them. And they openly are now, after years and years of being in business, are openly promoting curly hair products and doing things for people with strong, highly textured hair. When we, We've been existing for a long time, right? So it's like, I get it and I appreciate that you are finally uh, acknowledging that our hair texture is a thing. It exists. It is um, real. It needs products. Um, and hairstylists are actually... Um, white hairstylists are actually getting into the curly hair thing, you know? Um, and I feel like I am the one to speak on this because I have worked in a solo salon before where there was 21, uh, 22 other stylists outside of myself and I was the only beautiful person in a uh, little small mini mall of wonderful hairstylists, right? So I just, I see the difference and I see when people treat you with past aggressiveness and microaggressions. And I'm also a military brat. So I've been brought up in all different types of cultures and it is just so obvious now, the older I get and the more my patience gets thinner and thinner and thinner with disrespect and rudeness. You know what I mean? I have gone through things from being in the solar salon and seeing all of them congregate and kind of alienate me out and not invite me to events and stuff like that. Cool. It's whatever. They don't know me that well. But then I go up to them and I'm like, hey guys, I like to be a part of events and stuff like this too. If you guys do something like this again, let me know. And then next thing I know, like four or five months later, we all at a hair show again and I'm just looking at the stuff on social media. And then the ones that I talk to is like, avoiding the conversation and not really want to talk about it because let's just put the cat out the bag i didn't get invited because i was the black girl right i can't stand it it is what it is i go play volleyball for zona here in tucson arizona they had this little volleyball league like adult recess type league deal and i go and i play volleyball I played high school volleyball. I never played college volleyball. So when I asked one question to um, justify something that we were doing or to understand what was happening and why we were doing it a certain type of way, tell me why I got treated like I was completely stupid for the rest of the season by that person that I asked. You know what I'm saying? Um, on top of that, while I was in the season... Um, we all get together for a huddle and you know, everybody's got to pile the hands up on top of each other. And one of the wonderful guys accidentally touches his hand on the top of mine. And you would have thought as quick as he jumped back that my hand was a dog that bit him, how he jumped back. And it was just so blatantly obvious to the other six or seven teammates why he did that. And then immediately, 10 seconds later, and I, now he want to be my friend. And, oh, <laughs> buddy, buddy me up. And I'm like, get your armpit off my shoulder because you fake. You know what I'm saying? Like, why do we have to continue to deal and do things and, and, and just be like, why is it so hard to just get along and live life as a black person in Tucson? Then you got the black people in here that don't speak to you because, you know, they walking with a white person and they want to fit in with a white person so they don't want to speak to you. I'm like, I ain't got nothing against wonderful people, but I'm just saying, this is just, it's stretching me thin and I'm getting so sick of it. I go to the restaurant depot. You give me a hard time about opening up an account talking about I need a TPT and a business license when I know I already looked online and all you need is the business license. And if it wasn't a woman of color sitting at the front desk that was standing up and saying, no, she doesn't need that. She only needs this. The wonderful boy was not going to let me open up my account. You know what I mean? And then on top of that, 
I go to my place where I go and I buy my slat wall and my hooks to hang up all of my retail products and things like that. And I walk through the front door and everybody's staring at me like I am an alien and I'm not supposed to be there. Mind you, this is a business that only business owners usually and typically shop at. So why else would I be here? Nobody tells me where anything is at. And then I start asking for things like, where's your use section? Where is this? And because I sound like I have a rapport with the building, now you're like, oh, it's over here. It's over there. But what about just saying, hey, how you doing? What can I help you with when I walk through the door? Because I am a patron coming in to support your business and to get what I need for mine. What about why do businesses invite people into their business? to spend money with them, but then when the people come, they're rude to them. That just gets on my nerves, you know what I mean? And it's like, as a middle class black woman, I know and understand that I do not look like the typical middle class citizen. Whatever that means, but we know what it means. You know, middle class is you ain't poor, but you ain't rich, but you know you working and making it happen. The ones paying the taxes, why I gotta be white to get respect? You know what I mean? And I know it's going to be some people that's going to see this video like, ooh, she is really going off. She is venting. But if you are wonderful, white, and you're watching this video, put it down in the comments. Why do y'all act like that? Every All of y'all don't act like that. But you know who you are. If you're one of them, why do you exclude people because of the color of their skin? Why even pretend to be their friend if that's how you are? You know what I'm saying? So, mm. We got this saying in the black community, and we be like, white people be white people. And if you a white person, and you see somebody, and it's a group of black people, and you do something that's kind of funky for no dang on reason, and you see them looking at the other black person doing this, you know what this means? This is sign language for a white people show, be white people. And I said what I said. Anyways, I got to go pick up my son. Y'all do better. Treat people how you want to be treated. Don't treat people based on the color of their skin. And don't be trying to read a book by its cover because it's not right. Read the book. Words have meanings. Open the books. Read them. Get to know people. Figure out who people are. I shouldn't have to say, oh, I know this business owner and that business owner. So now, you know, I'm associated with another black person that has done good businesses. So you're like, oh, she's one of the good ones. I'm sick of it. Y'all do good business, period, until people give you a reason otherwise not to. Y'all have a blessed day. Let me go get my child out of daycare.